самого детства вопрос алкоголя и алкоголизма был рядом с Since childhood, the matter of alcohol and alcoholism has been around me. I say around me, since I don't really consume it. My body didn't allow it. But I was surrounded by people who were abusing it to a certain point, and up to this day, I am still a witness to that. I witnessed how the people I knew had been transformed into something different, into creatures I never knew before. Their behavior had changed, as well as their voice and the thought process. I witnessed four of those during my lifetime. This brings me to a question, is it possible to receive a lodging of something or someone during heavy alcohol consumption? What is happening to the identity of the host at this moment? What happens to that entity when the host gets sober? What is alcoholism from a magical point of view? What is the reason for it from a magical standpoint? Perhaps this question may sound weird, but the fact remains alcoholism has existed throughout the centuries, which means that it is needed for something. It is a long but very accurate question because we can see that the person expresses interest not only in order to avoid it, but also to understand its function. Let's start with the last part. What is the reason for it? In reality, wine was given to people for leisure for relaxation. What physiologically happens at that moment, I think that doctors can explain this with different levels of complexity, telling you how certain reflexes slow down, how some neural connections get blocked and stop following usual patterns, allowing a person to temporarily loosen up. And in certain doses, in certain amounts, it truly has such an effect. Alcoholism appears when a person sees no limits. Then numerous neural connections fall apart and the person loses all social skills, because neural connections include the abilities to function socially. A person forgets how to sit, how to stand, hold a spoon, how to talk, how to greet someone. Acquired skills are responsible for that. Everyone has their own physiology. For someone, five grams of alcohol is nothing, while for another, it would put him straight to sleep. Such a behavior of a person, an aggressive behavior, makes him extremely vulnerable, as if an empty vessel. And if he is located inside an informational environment that is filled with certain, let's say, informational and energetic objects, then they can definitely consider such consciousness as empty, as vacant, not occupied by anyone. And for some time, at least for a certain moment, they may take place as its hosts. This is what a drunken possession looks like. That happens sometimes. Although we should say that it doesn't occur very often. Usually, it happens that at this moment a certain internal force is awakened, a certain entity that resides within the human body. Yes, this happens and happens very often because everyone has their own personal zoo that they carry inside their heads. Sometimes an empty consciousness, as if gives a reason for anyone from this zoo to wake up and manifest itself. But as a rule, the next morning, as long as it is not a hardcore alcoholic, everything gets restored. If it is this case of hardcore alcoholism, then the neural connections that were deactivated during the consumption process don't have enough time to regenerate, meaning that they are gradually destroyed, and a person completely loses all his social skills. That is why alcoholics look so absurd. They simply forget and lose their human likeness. Something resides within them, perhaps a certain ancient force, perhaps their personal larva that used to be a developed consciousness in its own time and then was stalked further away. And when this consciousness stopped being developed, it found an opportunity to manifest itself, like a certain astral conglomerate. Anything can happen. It is always necessary to diagnose what is present within a person at this moment. Alcoholism is a problem of a weak consciousness. 
With a weak spirit, the spirit in particular, their inner world does not affect neither the development of their individual character nor the surrounding world whatsoever. They can't handle the heavy pressure of reality, and that is how they save themselves. Save themselves from the need to fight, the need to struggle, the need to prove anything to anyone, including themselves. A sacred space is never empty, people say. From a magical point of view, according to the law of equilibrium, emptiness should not exist. That is why in general anyone would have the right to occupy such a consciousness, and it wouldn't be considered a violation. If a person has voluntarily destroyed his internal essence, then anyone has the right to take up his shell. That is why these types of consciousness quite often manifest through the local madmen, or a certain conduits of particular information, including that of demonic nature, information that we often link to certain forces, particularly to the spirit of the place. We mentioned on numerous occasions that the spirits of the place do not disdain communicating with people they are trying to pass the information to through these types of consciousness. Simply because it is the easiest way, those consciousnesses are an empty shell, meaning that you can input any information into it and it will with 100% certainty exit in exactly the same form that it entered. It could perhaps be supplemented with a certain amount of obscene language or some added thoughts, but it won't distort the essence. Of course, the opposite may happen, because, I repeat, an empty consciousness may be possessed by anything, including a dead spirit that simply wants to avenge its own death. This also can happen. But all of this doesn't occur too often, since if a person has a soul, it periodically will wake up and take the reins into its own hands. Physiologically, it looks like an attempt to regenerate certain neural connections, and quite often it manages to do a much better job than the surrounding environment trying to destroy these very connections by the use of alcohol. But again, I repeat, anything can happen. The fact that fate, dear colleague, gave you an opportunity to observe these people is probably not accidental. Perhaps for you it is some type of experience. And it's good that you are observing this experience from the sidelines and not going through it personally. Perceive it in exactly this way, even though it is, of course, very unpleasant, especially if those people are close to you, your relatives, the ones you have to be around. It is always unpleasant, painful, depressing, and typically doesn't add optimism to your life. But sometimes it can be very useful to observe them. The understanding that, in reality, it was a beneficial experience comes later, when everything is over. Then you get the chance to analyze, although this possibly may be said about all unpleasant life experiences.